Today we're going to be replacing a whole bunch of fluorescent lights and this is going to be really fun because we're not just replacing them with regular fluorescent tubes. We're going to actually be retrofitting this and converting it all to operate off of high efficiency LED lighting. There are two different types of LEDs that you can choose to install in your fluorescent fixture. One is going to work with the ballast that is installed up in the fixture, which you'll see the ballast here in a little bit once we get to disassembling the unit. Uh, the problem with those, or the downside to buying LED bulbs that are compatible with the ballasts, are that you're going to actually waste a decent amount of power running that ballast for no reason whatsoever. LED bulbs do not require ballasts, whereas the old fluorescent fixtures did. And you pay a penalty if you want to just snap a new LED bulb in there by having to run that ballast all the time. So my preferred way is to get rid of the ballast, we're going to bypass it, we're going to buy LED bulbs that are designed to operate on 120 volts, and then we will bypass the ballast and make everything work really nicely. There are several different brightnesses, wattages and colors that you can choose from for the lights as far as color temperature. Make sure you just spend a lot of time researching and getting the exact ones that you need because you don't want to have to deal with a bunch of bulbs that end up being incompatible or end up not being the color temperature that you wanted. Here's my electrical tester and I have it put into amps alternating current so we're ready to clamp this around the wires that are feeding the lights. And these top three circuit breakers happen to be the three banks of lights that are feeding the shop. So we're drawing about 4.75 amps on bank number one, 4.9 amps on bank number two, and bank number three, 4.9 amps. Now, it's very important that you pay attention to the end that is on your existing bulbs when you go to order your new ones. It's best if you can just replace it or with, with the LED option that you order, if it has the correct end, it's gonna save you a little bit of work. So the bulbs that we actually ended up getting were single pin bulbs instead of this style here. When I ordered these bulbs, I did it remotely, and I thought that I had confirmed that we needed a single pin when actually we needed this other style here. So we ended up with these single pin uh, light bulbs, and I thought we were in big trouble for a moment, but, there is a solution and it's actually simpler than you would expect. These are the old R17D sockets that attach to these existing bulbs. They make replacement pieces just like this that are compatible with the single pin and they're very inexpensive. At the time of shooting this video, we could get 12 sets of them for just over $20. So it's really not that big of a deal. I'll link to these in the description below. They're inexpensive enough that if you wanted to, you could just purchase the replacement socket pieces to go with your single pin lights. So you can kind of price it out and see if you find a better deal on the lights that have a single pin versus the lights that have the R17D base. So taking a quick look at this wiring diagram, you can see that we have our AC input voltage of 85 to 277 volts. So they can actually accept a range of voltage and still work properly. The power that they use is 90 watts. So I kind of expect that our power usage might be pretty similar to the old fluorescents. The color temperature is 6 to 6500 Kelvin. So these bulbs tend to land on the bluer side of the light spectrum. Now here it tells us that the line neutral or neutral line can be hooked to either end. So it doesn't matter which end is our neutral and which end is our line. It's always best to turn off the actual circuit breaker on whichever lights that you happen to be working on rather than just relying on the switch and then verify with an electric meter that you actually have no power. So remove our old bulbs here. These are eight foot bulbs. And we just remove this cover by turning this little clip. Drop it down and it just slides right out. Now you can see that ballast that is installed there in order to operate those fluorescent lights and that is the device that will be either bypassing or physically removing from the fixture. A lot of times people will just bypass them and leave them in place because there's not really any reason to take them out and that's probably what we'll be doing today. It's actually pretty easy to replace these end pieces here. Basically you have to pop this 
end part of the fixture out. And the way we do that is just take a screwdriver right here, just slightly pry until you're able to pop this down far enough to where it'll just snap out completely. Now since we're not going to be reusing these end connectors here, we're just going to clip these wires off pretty close right to where they come into the old sockets. Now we'll just do the same thing on the opposite end of our fixture. Right here is the power coming into our fixture. Now this is wired in series with more lights going down the way. So we have our blue wire coming in from the left right here. It then gets wire nutted and then tied into our fixture right here with this black wire. So this, this wire right here is what was providing power to this particular fixture. And then our neutrals right here come through and do the same thing. We have our neutral wire right here that's feeding our fixture. So we will trace these two back to where they connect onto the ballast and then clip them. And I'll actually clip all the wires that are coming out of the ballast since none of them are needed anymore. And then just hang on to that wire that we just clipped out because we'll be reusing some of it in just a few minutes. We have our blue and white wires that feed in and then they're tied together and then the blue and white wires continue out the other end of the fixture. So our power supply to this fixture are those white and black wires. So this is what we'll be powering our fixture from once we get to rewiring it. The ballast itself has no power going to it and there are no wires coming out of it anymore. It's just mounted up in place there. So at this point we could remove the ballast if we wanted to. I think we're just going to leave it there because there's not really much reason to take it down. As you can see our old sockets used a spring-loaded tensioner on one side to allow you to install the bulb and our new ones are going to be much the same. In order to remove the old sockets all you have to do is just pull the, on them and they just slide right out just like so. Just take our new socket and snap it into position. So there's one. Slide the old sockets out. Now we have to make our wiring connections on the back of these sockets. The color wire that they used to attach to the spring-loaded end of the socket was blue and red, which are both colors that indicate that these are hot wires in North America. So I think we're going to retain that same concept and use, I believe we're going to use the red wires to connect onto the line voltage going to the bulb. Now that we have our wires stripped back, we can insert them into the push style connectors that are built into these sockets. So we'll do that just like so. Give it a little bit of a tug to make sure that it feels nice and secure. So there's one and two. Note that theoretically we could jumper from one of these to the other, I believe, by using that second push connector and then you'd only have to have one wire going to each end. But I like the redundancy of having two so that we have a solid connection going to each end of the bulb. So we're ready to snap in the hot end of the fixture where the line voltage will be attached. Now we're going to work with the neutral side. Now I have a little bit of a quandary here and I want you guys to give me your opinion as far as what would be legit. I am going to use this yellow cable to attach the neutral to the fixed socket on this fixture. Now according to North American code I believe uh, the only colors that are designed to be used as neutral are either white or gray. Now, I'm going to call this off-white. It's actually a little bit more yellow looking, obviously, but we're just going to call it off-white for the purposes of we're going to use it as a neutral. Uh, but I believe that technically it should be white or it should be gray. So my question for you guys is when you're retrofitting like this, what is your opinion on the color that this wire should be? Should I have to go and obtain white or gray wire to comply with the neutral coloring standards in North America or is using the existing fixture wiring that was inside of the fixture originally acceptable since it's not technically in the building wiring it's inside of the fixture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a poll right up here and I want you guys to uh, give me your opinion on what color this should technically be 
uh, or if using this yellow wire is just fine. I think it is. Like I said, we're just going to call it a off-white wire. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and insert our wires into the push style connectors just like so, giving them a little bit of a tug to make sure that they're firmly seated. We have our neutral side of the fixture all ready to go with our off-white wire and then we have our hot side of the fixture ready to go with our red wire. So we're ready to wire up the fixture now that we have our uh, sockets all back in place. And we can see here that we have our neutrals coming in right here and then our hot wires. Now a lot of times you would just have two wires coming in and attaching onto your fixture. But like I said earlier, uh, this is passing the neutral through to the next fixture as well as the hot wire through to the next fixture. So instead of undoing these wire nuts up here, I'm just going to leave those connected and then I'm going to connect onto these two wires coming down that used to feed the ballast. Make sure that whatever connector you use is rated for the size of wire that we're working with. This is actually fairly small fixture wiring inside and I think it's 18 gauge but it might even be 20 gauge. These things are good from anywhere to 28 to 12 gauge copper wire. So I think we're going to use these. I'll show you one of them up close here. I'll link to all these different style connectors in the description below. These lever nuts just have, like it sounds, a little lever on them and when you flip that lever up, you should be able to see that open up inside. And then of course when I latch it back down, you snap it down that last little bit and then it's ready to go. Start by hooking up the neutral side of our fixture. We've got these off-white or yellowish wires that we'll be hooking to the white wire that ultimately taps onto our main neutral coming into the fixture. So we'll start by putting our main neutral wire in here and then we just snap the corresponding lever closed, give it a tug, make sure that it feels nice and secure. Then we'll put in our next neutral wire, snap that one closed, and finally our third wire and those all feel very, very secure. And then we'll just do the same thing on the other side. All right, we're just about ready to throw these LED bulbs in here, but I just want to take a quick second and just ask you if you'd be willing to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to be notified about future uploads. I rely on your support to keep this channel up and running and a 90% or more of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're interested in this type of content, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Now as you can see here, we opted for the dual row LED bulbs, basically to cram as many lumens as possible into each foot of these LED replacement lights. I will try to link to the dual row LED lights in the description below, as well as the regular single row ones. These are eight foot LEDs, and so I feel like the more common application is gonna be four footers, so I'll link to those in the description as well. As I showed you earlier, the wiring diagram indicates that we can have either end be connected to either line or neutral, so it doesn't matter which side we put into the fixture first. Attach the side of the LED bulb to the spring-loaded portion of the socket first. Right here in the middle of these eight foot bulbs, they tend to sag down a little bit and they do actually make a retainer bracket that I'm going to be installing for these just to keep them a little bit more secure. So the link to those will be in the description below. All right, the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and turn this breaker on. Look at that light. Can you tell which one is the new LED bulb? It's that one. Just kidding. It's that one. Look at how bright that sucker is. One of the nice things about these single pin bulbs is you can actually rotate them to face any angle. With these dual row LEDs, you can kind of face it so that you have one facing straight down and then one facing out to the side. You can just see how well lit this back area here is, which I guess 
just highlights the mess that we have going on, but maybe it'll inspire us to clean it. There they are, all the lights are nicely installed. You can kind of see how much brighter those are. I mean, it's hard to tell or gauge it in a video, but uh, the amount of light that these things are putting off is unbelievable. We went with like the highest lumen output bulbs that we could find. So we have 90 watts per bulb that is being used. And if we count up the number of lights we have on this particular circuit, it's two, four, six, eight, ten lights. So we should be drawing about 900 watts. So what I want to do now is actually just check our voltage really quick coming into this panel. Anytime you're working in a panel, uh, just be super, super careful. Uh, obviously this is a live panel that I'm working in right now. I'm going to just check the voltage coming in the top here. I'm just going to use one hand. It's better to use one hand while holding your test probes so that uh, you don't shock yourself through your heart. So we're actually running at 241 volts. So if we divide that in half, that's almost exactly 120 volts. So it's like 120 or 121 volts of power that we're dealing with per leg. So if we take our 900 watts divided by our voltage of 120 volts, we should come up with about seven and a half amps of power that is currently being used by those new LED lights. So we'll put our meter into amps alternating current and then clamp this around that first bank. Now we are expecting seven and a half, we're only getting 6.25 amps that's being drawn on those LED lights. So yeah, it's about what we expected, even just a little bit less amp draw than we were expecting. So I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. Uh, let me know down in the comments any thoughts or suggestions that you might have for this type of project or retrofit situation. Oftentimes, if there's something that I missed in the video or something that I did wrong, I will be corrected in the comments below. So it, it's worth it just to take a couple minutes and leave a comment or look at the comments that have already been left and see if there's any information that you can glean there. So I'm going to have to continue and repeat this process on the remaining 15, 20 lights, whatever it is. And I think our shop will be very well lit for a very long time to come. There are so many options and variations in the types and styles of LED bulbs that you can get. You can see this is the more traditional two pin style light with just a single row of LEDs on it. If you want to go for more of a warm feel, you're going to want to go for something more like a 3500 Kelvin temperature bulb. Or if you want to go with exactly what we have here, this is a 6000 to 6500 Kelvin. So this is a very blue-ish colored light. Uh, almost like a daylight. Kind of looks like I'm standing next to a window right now. This type of light is oftentimes used in a lot of machine shops and uh, areas where a lot of uh, technical work is being done. I'll link to the Wagos down below along with all the other materials including LED bulbs and all of the various things that will be needed for doing a retrofit project like this one. If you want to see some more electrical and lighting type videos, I'll link to those right here on the screen. We'll see you over there in a few seconds. Thank you.